conspiracy theorists are often mocked and their conspiracy theories are treated like jokes. I do agree that some conspiracy theories are just flat out insane, but that doesn't mean every conspiracy theory is a joke. As it happened in these cases, sometimes conspiracy theorists are the only ones seeing the truth. So today I'm sharing with you five conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. Make sure you stay for number one because it is the most scandalous operation run by any government. Project MKUltra One of the most shocking conspiracy theories that turned out to be true was a CIA program called MKUltra, the CIA's mind control program. MKUltra was the code name given to an illegal program of experiments done on human subjects. Designed and undertaken by the United States Central Intelligence Agency, or the CIA, the program was active between the 1950s and 1973 and used U.S. and Canadian citizens as its test subjects. During the program, the CIA established front companies to work with more than 80 institutions, including 44 colleges and universities, as well as hospitals, prisons, and pharmaceutical companies. With these partnerships in place, the agency ran experiments on subjects using drugs, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, as well as various forms of torture. In December 1974, the New York Times alleged that the CIA had conducted illegal domestic activities, including experiments on U.S. citizens during the 1960s. That report prompted investigations by the U.S. Congress in the form of the Church Committee and by a presidential commission known as the Rockefeller Commission that looked into domestic activities of the CIA, the FBI, and intelligence-related agencies of the military. In 1975, Congressional Church Committee reports and the Presidential Rockefeller Commission report revealed to the public for the first time that the CIA and Department of Defense had conducted experiments on both unwitting and cognizant human subjects. In 1973, the CIA director Richard Helms ordered to destroy all MKUltra files. As per his order, most CIA documents regarding the project were destroyed, making a full investigation of MKUltra impossible. But a cache of some 20,000 documents survived Helms' purge, as they had been incorrectly stored in a financial records building and were discovered following the FOIA request in 1977. At least two American deaths can be attributed to this program, according to the Church Committee, but because of the CIA's purposeful destruction of most records and the uncontrolled nature of the experiment, the full impact of MKUltra experiments, including deaths, may never be known. However, there are many speculations about MKUltra. Lawrence Teeter, attorney for convicted assassin Sir Han, believed that his client was under the influence of hypnosis when he fired his weapon at Robert F. Kennedy in 1968. Teeter linked the CIA's MKUltra program to mind control techniques that he claimed were used to control Sir Han. Although the CIA insists that MKUltra type experiments have been abandoned, some CIA observers say there is little reason to believe it does not continue today under a different set of acronyms. The Gulf of Tonkin Incident On the night of August 4, 1964, at the height of the tensions between the U.S. and North Vietnam, the Communist Navy made the bold decision to attack two American destroyers, the USS Turner Joy and the USS Maddox. The American ships were outside North Vietnamese territory when they radioed that they were being attacked by three North Vietnamese torpedo boats. Hours after the first radio message from the Maddox, President Lyndon Johnson reported that at least two of the enemy boats were sunk, and American media outlets backed up that story in numerous articles. President Lyndon B. Johnson promptly drafted the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which became his administration's legal justification for military involvement in Vietnam. But conspiracy theorists thought it looked a lot like a false flag attack. 
They speculate that the events have been concocted by the US government and military to push forward with plans to expand the war. And they were right. In 1965, President Johnson admitted that for all he knew, the US Navy was shooting whales out there. In 2005, a NSA report on the records from the night of the Gulf of the Tonkin incident concluded that the event was blown out of proportion on purpose, which is pretty significant since the NSA was the only one who did the initial blowing. According to the report, quote, it is not simply that there is a different story as to what happened, it is that no attack happened that night, and American officials knew it almost immediately. The first Gulf War was sold by a public relations company. In 1990, when the Iraqi military invaded the sovereign nation of Kuwait, it was far from a foregone conclusion that America should intervene, as most Americans had never heard of Kuwait. But when 15-year-old Nayira took stand to testify about witnessing Iraqi soldiers leaving babies to die in Kuwait, she instantly grabbed the heartstrings of Americans who threw their support behind America's involvement in the Gulf War. She said in tears, While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of incubators, and they took the incubators and left these children to die on the cold floor. It was horrifying. Her testimony was used by the President and U.S. Senators as evidence for the need to increase America's presence in the war. But two years later, in 1992, John MacArthur of the New York Times discovered Nayira was the daughter of Kuwaiti ambassador in the U.S. and that her story had been utterly fabricated. And the CIA was responsible for organizing the funds and advertisements to disseminate Nayira's testimony. Her testimony had been organized as part of a free Kuwait public relations campaign. She had been coached to give her false testimony by public relations company Hill and Knowlton's vice president. The scandal showed that the CIA helped few powers that wanted Americans in the war with Iraq for their own purpose, which we all know was oil. Operation North Woods during the Cold War, Communist Cuba under its leader Fidel Castro was a problem for the United States. The U.S. tried to oust Castro during the Bay of Pigs invasion of 1961, but the operation failed. So the generals came up with an unbelievable plan called Operation Northwoods. The Joint Chiefs of Staff of the U.S. military drew up and approved plans to create acts of terrorism on U.S. soil in order to sway the American public into supporting war against Cuba. The plans included innocent Americans being shot dead on the streets, boats carrying refugees fleeing to Cuba and being sunk on the high seas, a wave of violent terrorism to be launched in Washington, D.C., Miami, and elsewhere, and planes being hijacked. It was also planned to fabricate evidence that would implicate Fidel Castro and Cuban refugees as being behind the attacks. Fortunately, President Kennedy rejected the plan. For years, there were rumors about the existence of Operation Northwoods, but it was generally disregarded as a conspiracy theory. Then in 1997, the John F. Kennedy Assassination Records Review Board declassified over 1,500 pages of documents. In these documents were the record of Operation Northwoods and proof that it wasn't a conspiracy at all. Theorists claimed that the military may have had a hand in Kennedy's assassination because of his blistering rebuke of the Joint Chiefs. However, there is no proof of it. Operation Mockingbird In the late 1940s, the CIA launched a top-secret project called Operation Mockingbird. This operation went on for nearly three decades. Their goal was to buy influence and control along in major media outlets. They also planned to put journalists and reporters directly on the CIA payroll, which some claim is ongoing to this day. The architects of this plan were Frank Wisner, Alan Dules, Richard Helms, and Philip Graham, the publisher of the Washington Post who planned to enlist American news organizations and journalists to basically become spies and propagandists. 
As it developed, it also worked to influence foreign media and political campaigns in addition to activities by other operating units of the CIA. In 1966, Ramparts Magazine published an article revealing that the Nation's Student Association was funded by the CIA. This well exposed the wide system of anti-communist front organizations in Europe, Asia, and South America. The United States Congress investigated the allegations and published a report in 1976. The report says, the CIA currently maintains a network of several hundred foreign individuals around the world who provide intelligence for the CIA and at times attempt to influence opinion through the use of covert propaganda. These individuals provide the CIA with direct access to a large number of newspapers and periodicals, scores of press services and news agencies, radio and television stations, commercial and book publishers, and other foreign media outlets. After this report, George H. W. Bush, the director of the CIA, announced a new policy which says, The CIA will not enter into any paid or contract relationship with any full-time or part-time news correspondent. Accredited by a U.S. news service, newspaper, periodical, radio or television network or station. He added that the CIA would continue to welcome the voluntary unpaid cooperation of journalists. David Bruce, appointed by Dwight Eisenhower to investigate this covert propaganda, stated that Mockingbird is responsible for over 50 of internal politics over the last half of the 20th century. Another shocking thing was, Mockingbird was responsible for $300,000 of the funding in the 1954 Animal Farm cartoon. They asked Walt Disney if he wanted to make the film, and he balked at the prospect. He was anti-communist, but the novel does not end happily and Disney wanted nothing to do with such a story. If you found any of these mysterious, then like the video and be sure to subscribe because you really don't want to miss what's next. And as always, thank you for watching.